everybody's scared, everybody's freaking out, and the people who aren't probably should, because COVID-19 is a global crisis, the likes of which I have never seen in my lifetime. This is serious stuff. You should stay at home, self-quarantine, self-isolate, wash your goddamn hands, for Christ's sake. But does anybody else feel like us gamers? We have been basically training for this our entire lives because it used to be my mom would yell at me for staying in the house too long playing video games. She'd tell me to go out and be outside with my friends. And now, now it's opposite day or rather opposite few months, I'm afraid, because we have to stay in and what better way to kill time than playing video games. So for today's video, I want to talk about the five video games that have helped me keep what little of my sanity I still have left. So first off, there's no order of priority to this list. I love all these games equally. Some of them I've been playing for far longer than others, but they're all great games. And they're mostly older games with the exception of one because, well, you know me, I'm all about retro here. So first off, Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Now, I've been playing this game on and off for some 20 years now, I think. I love the Heroes of Might and Magic series, but two and three, especially three, have a special place in my heart. For those who never played it, first of all, I feel sorry for you, but there's no excuse because it's so cheap. You can get it on goodoldgames.com, not sponsored by the way, for I think 10 bucks right now? Heroes of Might and Magic 3, like the other games in the series, is an RPG slash turn-based strategy game. You start out in a town and there's seven or eight to choose from. They go from like the town of, of the humans, so you have like human units like archers and pikemen or whatever. Then you have like Rampart, which is your standard medieval fantasy type fair. Like you have dwarfs and pegasus, dragons and stuff like that. There is Necropolis, so your units are zombies and skeletons. It's a lot of fun. So like I said, there's like seven or eight of them. And I don't know the exact number, and I know it's embarrassing considering how long I've played this game, but I always only play with either Rampart or Necropolis. I, I'm not interested in the other towns. That's why. Anyway, you explore the map with this little or multiple heroes collecting resources and capturing buildings that produce said resources. There's like six of them that you need to collect to upgrade your town and recruit units. Like I said, there's RPG elements. There is the turn-based combat aspect of it as well. Now, personally, I favor RTSs, like real-time strategy titles, and I'm not huge on the medieval fantasy setting. It's, just, it's, why, it's, it's the reason why I was never able to get into Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones. But in Heroes of Might and Magic, the, the way you have your little towns and you're exploring this beautiful map and you get the combat and everything, everything just blends together so well that I'm willing to give it a pass. Like, I don't even think this game could work in a modern day setting. So it has to be medieval fantasy. Now, you would think with how much I've played this game, I would be, I don't know, maybe good at it. I suck. When I play this game on live streams on either YouTube or Twitch, which by the way, I want to be game streaming more often because, you know, global pandemic, can't really go out. People in the chat are yelling at me for all the things that I'm doing wrong in the game and it's embarrassing because again, I've played it so long, but I just have so much fun. That's the thing about me. I play games a lot, I'm not good at any of them. <laughs> but Heroes of Might and Magic is such a great title and the replay value on this game is amazing because there's so many different scenarios to play in all the different towns and everything. It's amazing. And like I said, 10 bucks on good old games. Probably there's there's sales going on on all these sites right now, like Steam and good old games. I imagine Origin too. So it's probably cheaper than that by the time you watch this video. Next up, Burger Time Deluxe. I have it here somewhere, right here actually. There's my physical copy of it right there. Burger Time Deluxe is one of the first games I ever played. Now, not the Game Boy version, the DOS version, which was a port of the arcade version. I was more used to the aesthetic of the DOS version. So when I first found out there was a Burger Time game for the Game Boy, one of my favorite consoles of all time, I was a little disappointed when I saw that the visuals differ quite a bit from the ones I was used to. You see, it's a little more cartoony, and though I definitely appreciate it more now because I've put so many hours into this game, I thought it was a little weird at first. Anyway, Burger Time Deluxe is basically a classic platformer. You play the role of this little cook and you're making burgers 
that are huge, by the way, by walking over the ingredients, making them tumble from one platform to the one below. You keep doing that until all the pieces fall down, assembling the burger underneath the level you're walking on. And there are anthropomorphic foodstuffs basically chasing you around, trying to kill you, and your only weapon is a salt shake. You can throw salt at them, which stuns them for a while. Also, you can flatten them by dropping a piece of the burger on top of them when they're walking right below. And you can also stun them if they happen to be on top of that ingredient when you make it drop to the, the level below. Very simple game, very simple premise. It's like I said, it's a classic platformer, but it's, uh, I love this game so much. Burger Time Deluxe is one of those games I will likely never get sick of. I just, I absolutely love this game. And like I said, the cartoony style of the Game Boy Port has grown on me. And plus, it has more levels than the original arcade or DOS versions of the game, so it's a win-win. Plus, you can play it portably. Now, this game is not that rare. It's not super expensive, but it is kind of hard to come by. I looked for this game for years, and then a buddy of mine, Lucky, from uh, Vancouver, actually sent this in with the box and the manual and everything. I love it, and it's in great shape, too, so thank you. Next up, probably the most recent game in this list, Audica by the folks over at Harmonix, the, the crew behind Rock Band. Remember Rock Band? I miss Rock Band a lot. Following the rest of their catalog, Audica is a rhythm game. You're basically in this, I don't even know how to describe this, it's some kind of platform in space, maybe an asteroid or something, but it's fine because like any other rhythm game, you're not going to be looking at your surroundings all that much, even though this is in gorgeous VR and you guys know how much I love VR. Basically, you are, I don't know how to even describe this, you have these two guns and you shoot at icons that pop up on the screen. Have you ever seen Osu? I think that's how you say it. The uh, rhythm-based game that looks a lot like Elite Beat Agents on the DS. Are they even part of the same franchise? I'm not sure. Are they? I should check. Yeah, so Elite Beat Agents, uh, it's the spiritual sequel to Osu, right? The, the Japanese title. Anyway, it's huge on PC and basically, Audica is the VR version of Osu. You have these icons that come on the screen. You're supposed to shoot them in with in sync with the music. And the shape of the icons determine how you shoot them. You might shoot them just like the one time. Sometimes you have to shoot and hold the trigger on them. Sometimes you have to shoot those icons holding the gun sideways like gangbangers from the 90s. Remember they used to do that? I love rhythm-based games, so I went into Audica knowing I was gonna love it because it's it's a VR rhythm based game. So far, I've liked every single one I played. Now, the music is not exactly my cup of tea. I'm more of a metalhead myself, but this has never been a problem when it comes to rhythm based games. I am able to get into it, even though it's not exactly my favorite style of music. And uh, there's 33 tracks to choose from, and at least in the Oculus Quest version, which is the one I'm playing on, they made it very easy to add new maps, which is what the community called the custom songs, which makes sense because they're mapping the music to the things they're shooting on screen, so it makes sense. Unlike games like Beat Saber, which there's a bit of a, you gotta put some work in to make that work. With Autica, out of the box, it supports custom tracks, and that is huge for the game, though I imagine it might put harmonics or Oculus themselves in a tough spot when people start creating these tracks with you know copyrighted content. And I'm not sure how it works out because they're not supplying the tracks or the place to host the tracks themselves. They're just saying, if you happen to have them, you can just put them in your Oculus Quest and it'll work. So maybe, I don't know. Anyway, Audica is an absolute must have if you're into VR or rhythm based games. And if you are into VR, I imagine you must have played Beat Saber. And if you did, you loved it, in which case, Audica is probably going to appeal to you as well. Oh, and one thing I really like is that when you flick the analog sticks, you can either spin the gun like this, or you can toss it into space and then have it be pulled back when you let go of the analog sticks. And it's it makes for interesting trick shots. Anyway, it's a lot of fun. You're going to love it. Go buy it. It's worth it. And it's it's on a sale right now too, on uh, at least on the Oculus Quest, like 20% off. Next up, we have Super Bomberman 4 the absolute best game in the series as far as I'm concerned. And yes, I did play Super Bomberman R, didn't care for it. I wish they would maintain the cartoony 16-bit style of Bomberman, and especially we're, we're living in a time right now when retro gaming, or at least retro-inspired gaming is so big, Bomberman is the kind of game that does not need 3D graphics and showy effects, none of that. Give me 
classic Super Nintendo Bomberman goodness, and I'm good. So I've been playing a lot of it on my PSP Go, which is here, so it's right here. For I have so many different emulation devices, but the PSP Go is still my go-to because it's so small. It's by now PSP homebrew development is at a stage where I don't have to reinvent the wheel. Whenever these companies send me these things, I have to like it's always like a, a weird like version of uh, Dingux, which ran on the original Dingu uh, A320, which I probably have here somewhere. And it's always one of those things like there's always some issue with it. Like most recently, I received the RG350 to review, which I did already on the channel here but then there's always a quirk like for instance out of the box the analog sticks don't work with the ps1 emulator so right then and there it makes it so that this is not my preferred way to play ps1 games on the go i would likely go with the psp go which by the way is a little smaller thus more portable and because of that i can bring it to more places anyway back to super bomberman 4 in case you never play super bomberman it's basically a very straightforward i guess you could call it a platformer of sorts you play this little guy and you're setting bombs to blow up these blocks in these maps. You blow up all the enemies there and then you go to the next level. Very simple. There's a bunch of power-ups that make your bombs more powerful or it allows the flames to burst through the blocks, hitting enemies on the other side. There's a power-up that freezes time so you can run around and blow up all the enemies. There's multiplayer, there's battle mode, there's couch co-op, there's battle mode. It's just such a great game. And four, for my money, is the best title in the series. I get the feeling Bomberman was not as big here in North America as it was in Brazil. I did a video once, the, you can hit the link there, but I'm, for once I think I'm pointing at the right direction, about the Locadoras, which were these basically cyber cafes in the 90s, but with video games instead of computers that we could go and like play Super Nintendo games for like a buck for an hour. These were not very common in North America, but they were apparently huge everywhere else because when I did that video, I got comments from all over the place. People in like the Philippines, in like Angola, like all over telling me that yes, they had something like the Locadoras in their country. Anyway, Super Bomberman 4 was a hit at the Locadoras and for that reason, I absolutely love it. Oh, by the way, you know why this is not under the shirt like usual? Because I'm an idiot and I recorded this video in Portuguese. I usually do that. I, I record the videos in Portuguese and I do them again in English for this channel and I forgot to turn on off my wireless mic so I have to I, I'm wired right to the camera here that's why you're seeing this this is very messy and finally Shadow of the Colossus one of my favorite games of all time the PS4 remake just came out on PSN plus so if you have that go download it it's so worth I was about to buy it because I bought it on PS2 actually I got that uh, from my brother as a gift I'm pretty sure I got it on PS2 then I bought it again on PS3 and I was about to buy it on PS4 uh, but then it came out on a PSN Plus, so perfect timing. In case you never played Shadow of the Colossus, what the f*** are you doing with your life? Shadow of the Colossus is one of those games that when people are debating, which by now it's kind of a dead debate anyway, but people will always bring this up. Our video games are Shadow of the Colossus is right up there with the answers to that question. The game is absolutely beautiful. You play the role of this... Um, the, the, the game actually doesn't tell you much about anything that's going on. You're this little boy and you stole this magic sword and you rode your horse to this forbidden land bringing this girl in tow and it's not even clear if she's dead or if she's like in a coma. The game is very, very ambiguous. But basically you want to bring her back to life or out of the coma, I suppose, if that's what's going on. Magazines at the time, and holy crap, I'm old. Video game magazines at the time made a big point of, of saying that you don't even know if she's dead. Like, it, it could be just like some, it, anyway. Though, come to think of it, in the intro, it does say that she was sacrificed because of a curse. So maybe, yes, she is dead. I wanna say, let's go with that, she's dead. Anyway, you took this girl and the sword and your horse all the way to this forbidden land because you heard that there's some entity there that can bring people back to life. Now this entity tells you that yes, we can do that for you, but you're gonna have to kill these 16 monsters for us. And by the way, the price you pay, aside from killing 16 monsters, is go it might be too great for you. That's the beauty of Shadow of the Colossus, the entire time, you feel like you're doing something you're not supposed to, and that's just brilliant. Anyway, you set off to find these huge monsters made of like stone and earth itself, and you have to climb them and then find these weak spots on them and stab them with your sword. Some of them, it, it's basically a puzzle game in a way because some of them, you don't even know how you're supposed to get on them. It's a beautiful, beautiful game with an amazing end. The thing I find most brilliant about Shadow of the Colossus is how much it conveys 
when it says so very little. There's no dialogue like between two characters in the game so much. There's some narration by these characters who are chasing the, the protagonist and you don't know exactly why they're doing that. But there's so much content narrative wise without the need for too much talking. Like I'm playing uh, through the game with uh, my girlfriend. She, well, she's sitting next to me and watching and giving me, you know, moral support, I guess, because it's a single player game. And she's not a big gamer or anything like that. And I was very curious what she would make of it, right? Because it's basically fresh eyes and it's so brilliant because when I when I kill the first Colossus like the music changes and like the Colossus you know stumbles and falls to the ground in slow motion and you know right then and there she's like wait a second but th that thing wasn't doing anything are you supposed to be doing this and I can I could see the like the cogs turning in her head her trying to figure out what the hell is going on and that is just the game does that without saying a goddamn word. And that's just, wow. Oh shit, I just realized she's probably gonna cry when the horse dies. And I also hope she doesn't watch this video. Anyway, those are the five games that have been helping me keep sane during these trying times. What about you? What have you been playing? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, follow me on Instagram, hit the notification bell, and whatever else you're supposed to say. I've been, I haven't been doing videos in a while, so I forgot. Uh, follow me on Instagram, I'm very active over there, perhaps. Some might say, too active. But yeah, that's all the time I have for today. I'm Izzy and I'm done.